today on Salon Daily Garage, we're going to be checking to make sure that these timing marks line up with that because this, as you can see, has just got a single bolt. A single bolt is going to allow it to move. I'm not sure where it is in proximity to the harmonic balancer, so we're going to check that to see if the timing was accurate. Since I checked the timing beforehand, we can see how far off it was. If that's off, we can calculate that. And per Brian at Dust Devil Garage, he wants to know, how do you find out what your cam is or can you... Um, figure out your cam specs inside the engine. Well, that's what we're gonna to do today. Also too, I'm gonna to make sure that this thing was, we're still trying to figure out what was wrong with this. So we're gonna to check to make sure that the cam didn't, you know, jump a gear. We're gonna find out where this cam was degreed at so we can figure out the cam specs and we're gonna figure out how, where this cam was degreed at and the timing chain and so on and so forth. So when you see me next, we're gonna have this thing set up and I found, well, it's, it's missing now. But I have, oh, no, nope, it's right here. Ah, uh, I have a tripod. Now, so that way it's not going to be one-handed automotive. Uh, and Mr. Wilson also gave me some a headset. We might try that. I don't know. So I, that way you'll have, see, one hand and two hands of operation uh, until then. Let's talk about the setup real quick. Setup is just a piston dial so I can see where the piston is in relationship. I'm going to do 50 thousandths before, 50 thousandths after this on my degree wheel when that's put on here. So that will tell me where true TDC is because that's the most important thing. And I'll leave this thing on there while I degree the cam. So in case I bump this, I can re get zero again because that's imperative. Everything is coming off of zero of the piston where it is on the degree wheel. Also too, what I do here is I take a bolt, I put it into the lifter, this is on the intake, and then I run it up, I have a little magnet in there to keep it, you know, so that way it sticks inside the, the lifter, and the magnet holds it straight up and down, and then I use basically just, you know, level, so that way I can get this thing as level as possible, so that way, because remember this thing's about three and a half inches long down in the side there, I don't want it to, to tilt or whatnot, so I put it as level as possible, and that way, that's a, a simple setup. On this so moving on if you're curious what I'm using this is what I'm using uh, this is just a bolt with a nut on it that's got you know a couple magnets in it and then the end of the lifter and when I put it in here it kind of sits in there like that and it keeps it nice and you know straight all right check it out watch one end two ends ah. all right so I took a guess and I turned it around to find out top dead center there, top dead center there, and top dead center there. I just checked it. I haven't actually done it. So we're going to do it all together. So I always go in the rotation of the engine because there is slack and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up till that drops 50, 000, or just beyond 50 thousandths. So I'm going the backwards direction. Just do a tapity tap, tap, tap. Oh, by the way, my setup on this is that I take... Uh, the bolt is a little longer, and then I take two three-quarter inch box and wrenches, and I, tor and I torque it down so that way it's tight, and there it is. So I go just beyond 50 thousandths, then I'm going to tap it, and usually it's right around 11 or so, as far as 50 thousandths up. So that's about 50 thousandths right there, and that's about 11 and a half, as you can see right there. Then I'm going to go around. At zero, 50 thousandths down. And that should be about 50 thousandths there. And that's about 10 and a half, as you can see right there. So I'm about half a thou off, right? Or half a degree off. So then I'm going to back this up to 11. Right there. So that's 11. And then I'm going to check it again. So I'm going to go back this direction. Go just beyond 50 thousandths, then come back to 50 thousandths before. 50 thousandths. Sorry if my head gets in the way, but I'm trying to do this in. It's 50 thousandths right there. That's about 11 right there. I'm going to put it right on 11. Because that's where it should be. Ish. There's 11. And then go in the direction of the rotation of the engine. There's zero. 50 thousandths down. On the piston should be right at 11. There we go. So we know that zero is exactly zero right there. So this is going to be zero. So once again, I'm going to back it up and then I'm going to come forward on it. 
and I'm going to see where zero is at, and you are too. So let's take a look. Get my little setup here, and let's see how close we are to zero. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's within, if you know the reference, I'd buy that for a dollar. Come on, name the movie. So there we go. That's one way to do this, and that's a quick way to do this. Now we're going to degree the can. Okay, so now that we know that zero, zero, sorry, I had to put you back into that thing. What I typically like to do is, you already saw the setup, is on this, I have it about a hundred thousandths pressed onto zero. So that way I know it, it's not going to go beyond that. So when it's on the base circle, I set it up there. So then, obviously, as I do this, I'm writing down everything. So we know that zero, zero. So now we're going to go in the direction, rotation of the engine. So we're going to go rotation and we're going to find out where max lift is and we're going to zero that out there and still going up okay so that's about max lift right there so we know that that's about 300 because remember we zeroed this out so we know that that's about um What's well, on 369. So we know that from, remember there's a hundred thousands in that. So that is um, minus one point, I'm sorry, point one zero zero. And then we have 0 0.369, right? So then what I'm gonna do is we know that that is what we would consider max lift. I'm gonna zero this out. And then we're just gonna figure out intake center line. So then I'm going to back it up till it's about 50 thousandths below, just beyond that. Then I'm going to go forward direction, rotation of engine. And we're going to write this number down. Where are we at? Is that? That's it right there. Okay. So that's about 59. So we got 59 degrees. And then. I haven't done this before, so on this one. So now we're going to go all the way to max lift. Make sure we're close ish. As long as it goes to the exact same point, that's close enough. Because as long as you get the exact same number on both sides, and we're going to do this a couple times, uh, we have 145 and a half. 145.5. All right, so there we go. I'm going to do the math real quick. So doing what I just did, we know that we had 100 thousandths. This is your lobe lift that we had. Then you got a minus that, so that gives me 269. So with a theoretical rock arm ratio of 1.5, which these things are never 1.5. This is your theoretical lift is 403. Same thing with the exhaust. It comes out to about 370. Um, so that's 270. Theoretical should be about 405. So then what you do is you take, this number is always going to be larger, the exhaust, as far as the, the center line. Then you take this center line. You take those two, you subtract them. You get that. That's the difference. Then you divide that by two. That comes out to 6.25. Then take this number and add it to this number, and that will be your low uh, your lobe separation angle. So this has an LSA of 108.5, which is a pretty decent number. Um, we're going to move on and get, I might make this into two videos, I'm not sure, but it might just be a super long one. And uh, we're going to flip the degree wheel over, get the zero again, since I, you already know how to do that, I'm not going to video any of that, but I'll show you how to get um, as far as the timing events. And we're going to do this all at 50,000 since we're doing all this at 50, and then we can get the advertised uh, later. I might even show that with a different video. But, yeah, so moving on. Okay, so we've already seen the setup on how to get zero. I flipped this around, so you don't need to see that. I put this on zero on the base circle with 100 thousandths of preload on it. So we already know that. So it's, I do the exact same thing each time. And get yourself a piece of paper. You're going to want to write this down. Okay. So then as we go forward, we're going to go in engine rotation. So then we're going to go engine rotation. And remember, this is going to bounce slightly. So we're going to try to 
keep that bounce down. But see, that thing slightly moves because there is oil on this. So do it a few times because the oil is gonna, gonna show some, some numbers. Okay, so we're gonna wanna go to six thousandths. Now remember, this is a, a, a mechanical cam. So they're gonna move very slowly from off the seat to six thousandths of, of low lift. They're very slow. So I'm getting right at about, make sure I get that there. See how much movement it gets before it gets exactly. So I'm gonna call that 48. So 48 degrees. And then now that's it, that's advertised. And then I'm going to go to 50 thousandths of lift. And you're going to see why. Because watch how fast this thing is going to exponentially move. See how fast it moves as I touch it? So we're going to get this number. And this will be your duration at 50. Okay. So that's exactly 5. And then we're going to come back around. We know how much lift it is at. So we know there's that lift. So as it goes down, we're going to know where approximation so we're going to we're coming up on to 50 thousandths here so as we get to 50 it's 50 right there and then now we're going to go to six thousand so you're going to see this thing slow way down see how fast it's moving and then as it gets close to six, see how much slower it goes? So as we come up on six, those will be your advertised. Okay. So I'm going to call that 85. So we're going to do the math and come back over. Okay, this is what we end up with. So these are your opening and closing events, and I did it at 6 at lobe and 10 at lobe. So that comes out to about 9 and 15 thousandths at valve. Now, I did the same thing at 6 and 10. I should have did a different one, but that's just what I did. So um, I was getting some wild numbers. I know in the video you only saw the 6, but I did this a few times to make sure I was doing it exactly right. So... This is exact. This is how you're getting it. Is that you're getting 48 degrees before TDC, 85 after bottom dead center. So you do 48 plus 85 plus 180 equals 313. Do the same thing at 10. Now at this one here, because what we were looking for is before TDC, but this one is going after TDC. So you have to minus. Uh, I'll explain that after this part of the video. But I'm going to do 180 because, you know, obviously it's, you'll, you'll see in the, after this next video as part of the, on the next slip, uh, 180, which is, is from bottom dead to top dead. And then I have to subtract five and then the 21.5 comes up to 196.5. Then I did the same thing for the exhaust. I just did it off camera. Otherwise this video would be too damn long. So Six and ten, I got 347 and 310. And this is the reason why it's really imperative that you get your valve adjustment right. Now I didn't do I didn't have it right for the exhaust, but as far as for the intake, if you're off by say um six thousandths here, look at the difference at duration you're gonna have there at the valve. So that's gonna be that's gonna see a lot of difference there. And so then we come with 347, 310, and 200. So what do we got? So this is your cam card. This is everything that we get. So getting your cam, degreeing your cam in your engine and figuring out what it is. Duration at 50 uh, is 196.5 on the intake, 200 on the exhaust. Uh, intake center line is 102.25. Obviously, you can knock off all these numbers, but there's always going to be some person on the internet says, oh, you forgot this number. So, and then 114.75, that's your intake center line. I showed you how to take these numbers. Um, you subtract this from this. Um, you get that number, you divide it by two, then you add that number to this one here or subtract it from this one, however you want to do it. Um, and that gives you your lobe separation angle, which is 108.5. Lobe lift 
is 269 and 270 and then multiply the 1.5 rock arm ratio to that and you get 4035 and 405 so there's that's how you do it there you go brian i hope you enjoyed this and uh i will explain why i have to do this negative in the next part and the reason why i had to subtract is that if you look how this thing's laid out if you're looking at your exhaust valve closing events right and then your exhaust valve opening event. So typically it's going to open in here uh, on a performance vehicle, but because this thing is so small, it's opening over here. And from this zero to this zero in simple, you know, geometry, that's 180 degrees, right? So if you're opening at 35, which this is 35 degrees uh, before bottom dead center. So 35 degrees is there. Then, so that would be 35 degrees. And from here to here would be 180. So it would be a 35 plus 180. But because it's opening at 15 degrees before bottom dead center, you got to subtract. So typically on most performance vehicles, you're going to be opening after um, TDC, which is going to be over here. So it would be this number plus 180 plus this number and that will give you dur your duration at 50. That's a good way to do it on this one because these things are so small. It's not the best camshaft to do your numbers on, but that's the reason why I had to subtract. So I still haven't found the issue with this thing yet, but this is gonna be one video. I'm gonna tear this thing apart in the next video, but this is kind of what we did. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that helps you out there, Brian. Till next time, peace. On a side track, check it out. Very little. Dots line up. So it wasn't the cam timing that was making this thing run hot. So I'm going to say it was probably just the timing that was making this thing run hot. All right. Enjoy the outro. Enjoy the outro.